And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. Yeah! If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys, Toys on Tap, Tap podcast. I am enjoying it, it's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's <laughs> and also <laughs> and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't Bootleg. understand, there were noises I couldn't hear with the perks. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why did he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I, I didn't realize it was just pretend voice. Oh. Good morning, good morning, welcome to Toys on Tap. Uh, I gotta tell you, I'm stoked because there's there's toys that you've created that I stare at regularly or go back to to like to look at and be like, this is how good my work has to be in order to do certain things. So I'm really stoked that you're here this morning. Well, thank you. I um, Actually, that's kind of funny because um, we, me and my wife, we make up dead greedy. So uh, we try to um, not make the high, highest quality on purpose. <laughs> okay. So the fact that um, you emulate that yeah. is, is kind of funny because we're trying to keep a certain level of, of like authentic, authentic, authenticity yeah and we're trying to keep um you know make it look like a real bootleg there yeah. if you've seen mexican bootlegs they're not that great oh i love them i actually have two sitting right next to me i love them they're uh but there's something about them even though they're imperfect they're there's still something charming about them yeah yeah i uh it's like your pieces uh remind they're like iconic like um the of course you're wearing the shirt beastie droids for sure which that's i like I, we're gonna get to this but i gotta ask did you think that it would be as big as it is when you first produced it did you think that it was gonna like be a continuation plus pins plus and I, isn't it in the background of uh what is that the goldberg's Correct. So you're everywhere. Yeah. Um, that was a little bit ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, I still make money off of it to this day. Uh -huh. uh, but no, I didn't think it's going to be as big as it was. I just thought I would do maybe 20 of them and that would be it. But um, everybody wanted one. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, I it it more than than uh, did its job. Yeah, uh, it, you know, cutting up the figures was worth it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you don't know when you're making something. Am I going to get my money back out of this? You know, I just yeah. killed Admiral Akbar. You know, yeah. who probably is around twenty to forty dollars now. Yep. <laughs> I do that regular as I'm like pouring resin. It's like, am I going to get even the cost of the resin back? Like the man hours, I've just assumed I won't get back. But like, am I going to just get supply back sometimes? Um, but I thank you for saying that my work's iconic. What other what other pieces did you like besides Beastie Droids? Hammerhead. Okay. And, yeah, and then uh, there's a mist. I don't know the actual name, but it's the Mister T Turtle. Okay. Yeah, those are the three that like you're hitting the big like uh, pop culture with Star Wars, Star Wars with fun, and then Ninja Turtles. And it's like they just those three resonate super well with me. That's what I, that's what I try to do. Um, yeah. I try to not just not just take two things and stick them together, but, but can I make it resonate? 
Yeah. Can I can I make it where um, someone feels an attraction for something old, but but new at the same time? Yeah. And, and well, it, all I do is basically if it makes me laugh and I like it, you know, whatever the circumstances are, um, then um, I think other people will. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's real simple. Yeah. You know? Are you, would you say based off of that, uh, would you say that you only make toys that you like? No. Um, toys is just, toys are just the, um, the medium, um, the way of expressing yourself. But um, I, I wouldn't say I always like what I do, like uh, Inspector Gadget, or I took Spock and mixed him with Inspector Gadget. Um, that one, I don't really like Star Trek that much, except making fun of Captain Kirk because he's such a womanizer, you know? It's <laughs> yeah. like he, it's like they're on a space mission personally for him to find women of different, um, uh, different, uh, species, yeah, and have sex with them. You know, that's pretty much the show. Yeah. Oh, there's green ladies. I didn't know there were green ladies. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, they need to just hold up a book with all the different people. He's like, I did all of this. But I I really didn't like, don't like Star Trek that much. But I know that it resonates with some people. Yeah. And um, also, Inspector Gadget. I watched a little bit of it as a child, but I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites. It's, it, it's not like Scooby-Doo to me. Yeah. So before we get so far into this, because I, I want to talk to you about toys so much, um, you want to introduce yourself and tell us what you do, who you are, and how long you've been doing it? Um, yeah. Um, trying to remember all those things to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he said, say your name. Okay. Um, my name is Jeremy, um, and I am one half of Dead Greedy. My wife, Jamie, does the other, uh, part of it, um, which we share responsibilities and work from molding to painting, et cetera. Um, so I'm one half of Dead Greedy, and there was a third part to your question. I've been doing this since 2015. I, uh, Became disabled in 2015 mm -hmm. um, due to a, a, a disease called Wilson's disease. Mm -hmm. So I became disabled. And um, I, then I had nothing to do. I got laid off my job, too. Um, so I had nothing to do. And so I started, uh, I found resin toys. Yeah. And it was something to take my mind off of reality but it was also something uh that w just fascinated me i was like i never thought of making a fake product yeah you know um that is something funny or different that i would like to make i didn't realize i could go and make things yeah you know so um, I just, once I got, I got obsessed with it. And so then I started studying, uh, different artists, seeing who, um, whose aesthetic I like the most and style and so forth. And, um, Suck Lord was the yeah. one, um, uh, I gravitated to. Um, there were others, you know, um, um, manly, uh, he had a C-3PO, yeah. uh, which is a prostitute protocol droid. Yeah. Um, there was uh, Killer Bootlegs, had Star Warhol, which I really liked a lot, mm -hmm. and had a figure named that until he beat me to it, um, <laughs> which kind of pissed me off. Um, and uh, let me see. I mentioned Killer uh, Rika. Yep. Rika, what I like about him too that I don't do yet or haven't done yet is he'll do some political stuff and I haven't even addressed those issues yet. 
I I was just trying to be funny and trying to be, you know, stupid. I um wasn't really, you know, sending out a a message or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I thought when I first started doing um bootleg toys and and doing all that, I thought that the point of it was to try to send a message, like to try to get something out there, try to speak something. Um, and I missed out on the fun part. And then I learned like, oh no, you can just do the fun part. You don't always have to say something. And so that's been super fun, like going back and forth and uh, just trying to figure out like with a toy, do I want anything to even come across or does this just a toy that I am proud of? Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's just like a song. Not every song's heavy metal. Yeah. Um, some, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear that. Sometimes you need a I just got broke up with song. Yep. You know, <laughs> listen to. Um, so yeah, some the the comedy thing uh is just a no-brainer. Um everybody likes to laugh. Everybody wants to laugh. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs one because, you know, uh, gas. I mean, I could name off a million things, Corona. Yeah. A million things that are depressing that we have to deal with in reality. And to break that with uh, some art that incorporates some nostalgia, but also makes you laugh. Yeah. I mean, that's like a winning formula there. When you, um like the jump from um being diagnosed to then doing toys was it just that you came across toys did you have a love for making those bootleg toys or did you like experiment with different things trying to fill that time um basically i collected toys yeah and have always been a collector so um, I was, um, looking at action figures and so forth and stumbled on to bootleg action figures. Mm -hmm. And I knew, you know, some of the Russian bootlegs and stuff like that, but I didn't know of artists making something called bootleg toys, um, that are made out of resin. So that's when I discovered Suck Lord and I was like, Okay, that's a that's a cool idea. Yeah. And um, then I started to emulate it and make my own things because a lot of his stuff was so expensive. And and um, a lot of the other artists I've seen, their work was really expensive. And I was like, well, I wonder if I can do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, there's uh, the price point it's always a difficult conversation to have with people like everyone. We all have different ideas of what we should be charging or um, what have philosophies on it. Because like, so I've had some of the older, like they started in like 2000 something and they're talking to me about like the cost when they first produced, it was like $150 for, a bootleg toy and now you can pick some up if i really searched for it i could pick up a couple bootleg toys for like 25 30 bucks and so it's like um that kind of pushes people out because they want to make a living out of this but also like to get people's artwork for so cheap is so gratifying like i have pieces that i wouldn't have been able to afford if it was still 150 bucks a piece and so it's, I don't know, it's kind of cool to be able to pick up pieces at all different price ranges and all kinds of stuff now. Yeah. I, I try to keep my stuff pretty low. Yeah. Um, like I think the most expensive figure I have is a hundred dollars and that's three figures for a hundred dollars. Yeah. So. And didn't you do a post? Cause someone was like trying to sell your beastie droid somewhere. Yeah. Um, Beastie Droids, I've seen go for as much as five hundred dollars. Wow! But I have the I have some already, so if I can sell you one for a hundred, 
Yeah. <laughs> um, you don't need to go and go to eBay and see these scalpers and, you know, pay ridiculous prices for, for artwork. Just yeah. contact the artist. In most cases, um, they will um, either custom make you something if they don't have it, or uh, we'll, or if they do have it laying around, we'll um, sell it to you. Yeah, uh, which I love. I, I think that there's so much fear around people reaching out to the artist, but so many of like all the artists that I've interacted with over all the episodes and everything, everyone just wants to talk. And if you reach out to them, they'll respond quickly. Correct. And, you know, everybody's people. Uh, they're just people. Yeah. Um, we we deify, we elevate, um, you know, people. But in reality, we're just all the same. Yeah. Um, I learned that, especially when I went to... Um, when they were filming the Goldbergs with my figure in it. Yeah. I flew out there and um, to LA and um, the, the people there, I was kind of scared at first, like, Oh my gosh, you're so-and-so, you yeah. know? And uh, like Sean Jabroni that mm -hmm. I met out there. Um, but they're all down to earth. They're all like, you know, we're just regular people. And it kind of weirds them out if you treat them like gods. If you do, I mean, wouldn't it weird you out? <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, I, that's what I learned over the course of even talking to Suck Lord uh, over the five, or we, now we have six episodes together. Even talking to him, it's like episode one when I first started, it was like, man, this guy, he's the top. And then when we started going over his life, it just became so easy to talk to him and just not think like it, it changed my mindset of like, oh, you're you're just a normal person going through all these things. Yeah. 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 But our society teaches us that we need to deify and, um, you know, put celebrities, especially or other people up on pedestals. But yeah. everybody just wants to be treated the same. Yeah. I'm interested. You had mentioned that you collected is so let's take it your story all the way back to as a kid. We interrupted this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. Meanwhile, the galaxy of bootleg treasures. DOV2, we have an engine failure. We must crash land on DKE Toy Planet. Oh my, we're doomed. Wait. Salvation! Hooray! We've saved the DLP2! Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE toys! Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures! DKE! Uh, tell me about your relationship with toys as a kid and then at what point you started collecting toys. Um, my relationship with toys as a kid started probably in 78. Okay. Like the height um, of Star Wars. Um, that was the first movie I saw. Okay. So, um, I saw Star Wars and everybody at preschool had Star Wars. So I, you know, my mom was cool. She was like, she always made sure I had the right toys. Yeah. And uh, so she, I had Star Wars that Christmas. So uh, I, uh, I loved Star Wars, loved the special effects. Um, pretty much I wore t-shirts with Star Wars on them. Yeah. But um, pretty much all the way through elementary school, because Return of the Jedi was in like 80. Mm, was that 85? Anyway, um, all the way up until uh, return, I was, you know, wearing the clothes and the underoos and yeah. all that, you know, the underoos were cool. I'm glad they <laughs> finally brought those back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It may not be too masculine, but they're freaking cool. 
Hey, you could feel as masculine as you want with those bad boys on. <laughs> as you like, you did that, that moment, which by the way, kudos to your mom for getting you the toys that everyone else had. That's yeah. Uh, right. When you did that start your like uh, love for toys, when you started getting those star Wars toys and you just had to have everything or was it like a slow progression from a kid up? Um, no, I instantly loved Star Wars toys. Yeah. Um, I, um, grew up in a very strict, um, uh, well, on one side of my family, I had Baptists and on okay. the other side of the family, I had Church of Christ. That's what it is pretty much here in Texas. Yeah. So I would take my Star Wars men to church with me. Yep. And, um, uh, sit them on the pew, you know, have them set up. And um, I so I, I they were with me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, that's how uh, much I had toys in my life where I had them all the time. Yeah. Um, but basically, I, I, I loved Star Wars from the first action figure I ever saw. And um, Darth Vader was my favorite. Yeah. Um, minute I saw him, I needed one. And um uh, I got one for Christmas. I got the 12-inch Vader. Yeah, the giant ones. Yeah. And um he was he's he was cool, but I wanted the little one. That's what yeah. I asked for. That's why I knew Santa Claus wasn't real, is because <laughs> I asked for a little bitty Darth Vader that I could put in my pocket yeah. and carry around. What did I get? I got that thing. So I was like, this isn't right. Santa's not real. Yeah. <laughs> he messed up my order. He, he totally messed my order up. Yeah. Now looking at it, it'd be like, wow, this is cool as hell. I just got a giant Vader. But as a kid, that makes sense. So like, no, I, I just wanted this one. What are you doing? Uh, when you, uh, so you, you're in that space uh, did that push you into other toy lines or did you just stay in that Star Wars realm? Um, I dabbled in G.I. Joe. Okay. I liked, I liked G.I. Joe a lot. Um, I usually liked a lot of toys that had shows. Yeah. You know, and 30 minutes of advertising. Yeah. You know, um, you know, He-Man, I loved He-Man. Uh, Transformers, uh, Micronauts. I loved them a lot in the seventies. Yeah, which did that inspire Cantina Knots for you? Correct. Right. And then Dove inspired the other half of that because he loves the Cantina aliens. Yeah, yeah he does. So I was like rainbow. I was like they need to be a rainbow, and so I took their main colors that they were like uh, Hammerhead has a blue uniform yeah or whatever you want to call it bathing suit and um the uh, walrus man is mostly orange yep so um i uh made them solid colors off of uh dove liking the cantina knots yeah so which i'm assuming he has a set then if he likes those yes yeah yes <laughs> um and then as you continue, there's a point that we always get to where people or kids take one or two routes. Did you get to the point where you either got rid of all your toys or you kept them? Okay. Well, that's where my wife comes in. Okay. Um, I had a huge collection, um, but um, like every 12 inch, I had yeah. them. Okay. Um, even IG-88 with original um, original bombs Ooh. and guns. Yeah. I had, yeah, I had all kinds of crap. And um, so eventually she convinced me that I didn't need all that stuff or, <laughs> or it didn't need to, you know, be, um, I didn't we didn't need it in our house. Yeah. So basically, um, 
she took me into downsizing. So I kept some stuff. Mm -hmm. So like the die cast ships, like um, the little TIE fighter that's white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the twin pod cloud car. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. A little Millennium Falcon. I um, I kept little ships and things like that. Yeah. Kind of smaller stuff and some action figures. But I got rid of a lot of it um, just because um, I couldn't really, where we live, I couldn't really enjoy it because I couldn't unpack it. Mm-hmm. So it was just basically sitting. Okay. Um, and so she she was like, well, let's go ahead and get rid of it, you know, because we can't really put it out. Um, and we needed the room. So, yeah. At what point? So um, when you go from I, I hear that story and then I hear how you and your wife are making toys together. How did that jump happen? Um, that jump happened when I started becoming interested in toys. Okay. And um, about 2015. Mm-hmm. And um, I started being interested in toys. So she, to help me keep my mind off uh, my Wilson's disease and uh, not having a job, that kind of stuff, she would help me. Yeah. And, um, so we started doing it together because she wanted to help me feel better. Yeah. So um, that's how it all began. Can we, I, I don't, um, can we pause there? I don't know that I asked you this earlier. If you're comfortable, can you describe what Wilson's disease is and how that affected oh, you? Oh yeah, sure. Um, I'm glad you asked. Most people don't ask me. Um, Wilson's disease is a genetic defect Mm. on chromosome 13 um, that what it does is it tells the liver to retain copper. Oh, no. So basically everything you eat that contains copper, which is coppers in beans, coppers in mushrooms, coppers in shellfish. I can go on and on. but. The point is, your your organ doesn't know to uh, expel the copper. It retains it. So what that does is that damages your liver until you get cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah. Uh, after your liver is totally saturated with copper, um, then the copper has nowhere to go but other organs. So it then goes to your eyeballs and it makes rings of copper around your irises. Mm -hmm. And then it also starts destroying your brain. Oh my gosh. And your nervous system. So um, I no longer have Wilson's. Technically I carry the gene for it, but I no longer have it since I um, got a liver transplant about four years ago. Okay. Did they figure out how to like help you balance everything so it doesn't come back or anything? Um, no, the, like I said, the the problem is in the chromosome thirteen. Yeah, and chromosome thirteen is in the liver. Okay, so I okay. don't have that liver anymore. I've got a new liver. Yeah, that new liver doesn't have the defect. Awesome! That's congrats! Like that's amazing that you were able to get to that point does that mean so here's the question i have then uh before we get back to toy stuff do you have residual effects that came from having the old liver um i have damage that the copper did to me okay that hasn't reversed yet yeah okay and oh okay so you said yet will it eventually reverse back the other way oh no Okay. I'm hoping. Yeah. So like my brain was affected. Um good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Um the um uh, so I don't know if it's gonna reverse or not. 
Okay. But I, I like me. So it's like, if it gets better, okay. If it doesn't, I can deal with it. Yeah. So, and it's crazy and incredible to hear that in the midst of this, like, crazy time in your life your wife was like okay let's do these together like let's do pick up on this together so in that first um moment of 2015 figuring out that you want to do this um what is that process like for you figuring out what you want to make how you want to make it learning how to do all the stuff what was that like for you huh. um basically I took this the Star Road Star Wars Road. Yeah. Um Sucklord was highly influenced by Star Wars. And yep. I already had an emotional attachment to Star Wars. Yeah. Because um it's been in my life. So it was the first movie I saw. So um basically I took the Star Wars road and said, I'm gonna make things themed around star wars yeah so that's where the name dead greedy came from um i, I actually wanted shot first.com mm-hmm. and somebody owned it so i was like okay i gotta come up with something else so i really hated the fact that in star wars they changed that han shot first okay you know? yeah and so um i came up with the name dead greedy meaning emphasizing the fact that he was dead and that Han shot first. Yeah. In my mind. So um, um, after we came up with the name, we bought the .com. And um, I'm trying to remember if Dove, no, Dove, I'm trying to remember if Dove contacted me before or after this. But I had made this sculpture called a hauntan, mm-hmm. which is half of a, which is a, a tauntaun with He-Man arms on it. Yeah. And uh, a vest and a Han, uh, Han Solo 12-inch head. Oh, with the horns on the head, with correct? The horns. So yeah, I'll good. send you a picture if you want me to. Absolutely. So uh, I had made that and Dove had wanted some. So he contacted me. Yeah. And that's how me and Dove met. And then um, um, I decided, yeah, I based using Star Wars from Suck Lord, basically. Yeah. Because I was analyzing like what what art I liked and I liked the ones, the ones that spoke to me were the ones about star Wars. Cause I grew up with star Wars. Um, yeah. Star Wars market so well, you can they put do. star Wars on anything and it sells. Yeah. And I think that that is like, it's crazy how well it markets. Like I, I it's sad. Um, and maybe not sad. Maybe it's just like how a good thing about the market. But whenever I want to do something for DKE or designer con or something for DKE con, uh, the initial thing in my head is like, okay, uh, before I think about producing something that's original and sending it over, what if I pitch a couple ideas that are coming from Star Wars? And it, I love doing those ideas. They're super fun. Right. Well, the other advantage to doing Star Wars is Dove loves Star Wars. Yeah. So, you know, he's going to say, yeah, I'll, let's do that. Right. Yeah. Well, not just that. You may actually sell one. <laughs> That's so true. And I. He's I love, like, I've got to have that. Yeah. And I love working. Um, my favorite things at the moment are like taking the star Wars like names or figures or whatever, and like pulling them so far away from what they are. So like my last um, toy, I think that every bootleg artist at some point should do something around Boba Fett just because. And the one that I offered to the toy gods and to dove was Bob a Fett, just a mild mannered office worker with the name that just unfortunate. And it was my favorite right. thing to produce because it like had nothing to do with Boba Fett, but everything to do with his name. 
Right. Yeah. And yeah. It, it was super fun to make. I like doing Star Wars stuff. Yeah. You like playing with words too. Yeah. Uh, especially or uh, hiding Easter eggs in a toy. Like though, that's some of my favorite things to do. Things that An example. Like, um, so uh, in, okay. So here's, here's the example. I hid, I think 12 Easter eggs in that Bob a fat toy that came out. Um, and it was, everything was on, uh, uh, you got a plastic badge that came with it. And on the badge, on the back of it, the UPC was the original Boba Fett UPC. The um, released or the date that he started that said like a oh, hired on date was the date of the first Boba Fett appearance. And he worked for General Automaton, which was the company that um, made R2 units. And like, it just kept going in that fashion where there was just little Star Wars Easter eggs everywhere. This is the Beastie Droids um, figure. And okay, yeah. Instead of when we were talking about playing with words and so forth. Yeah. Um, basically, a lot of what you were talking about, I did the same thing with the Beastie Droids. And I think awesome. that is one of the things that people like. Like, for example, the plane, um, you can't see it because the figure's on the car, mm -hmm. but the plane that was on the front of the BC Boys album, License to Ill, yep. um, had the words, eat me, on the side of the plane if you held the... Um, the record or tape up to the mirror it would say eat me oh so okay. i did instead of license to ill i did lichen blue milk and then <laughs> so good i spelled drink me backwards in abaresh so that when you went and held my picture up to the mirror it said drink me instead of eat me Oh, that is beautiful. Thank you. So that's the and then I did all the songs. Um, I did all the songs. Basically, I had made them, rewrote them, and had made them all have to do with Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, that's um, so good. Oh, if, even their names, like I. I this one, I love when things work out like this. Yeah. When you go and plan something and it works. Yeah. So I have ad rock, right? Well, I have ad bot. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, MCA, MC8. And he's yep. made with an IG88. Um, Mike, Mike D, Mike 3. And he's made with a 3 CPO. Or so C3PO, excuse yeah. Me. <laughs> but basically, anything I could make fun of yeah. or rhyme with um, was a target. Yeah. Which it's it's perfect because it's the best kind of making fun of. Like, I think it, when you draw in so many markets, it makes the toy that much better. Like there's like a pop culture element on both sides and then a huge Star Wars element that like ties that into it just beautifully. And I think toys like that are just my favorite because they start to just tie so many things together. Yeah. Um, another one I did like that was Mr. TMNT. Yeah. One of the ones you like. Yep. Well, I took Mr. T and I took TMNT. And I just slammed those together. So Mr. TMNT. Yep. Then on the, um, what does Mr. T always say? I, I pity, pity the fool, right? Yeah. And what are the bad guys called in TMNT? The foot. I pity the foot. <laughs> Boom. Done. Yeah. I got a, got a catchphrase that combines both the foot and i pity the fool bam slam those together i've got 
a cool catchphrase and then a cool figure. That's beautiful. beautiful. And then if I thank you. And then if I love it, then I I go, okay, that's that's I want to put my name on that. Yeah. You know, did that one do um, would you say as well as uh Beastie Droids did? Not as well, but it did sell out in the pre-show of the 2015 SDCC, I think. Nice. So in the pre-show, so before they got to this to open the doors to people, yeah, and people actually get to buy it, yeah, it sold out before that. Which that's just incredible. Like that, if that doesn't speak to who you are as an artist, like that's incredible. Well, I was pretty stoked. <laughs> as, as you um, made these, so that both, uh, so that one was 2015. Beast of Droids comes uh, a lot later, right? Like four years later? Um, I would have to look, honestly. I want to um, say it was pretty new when I saw it the first time, but I couldn't remember. I remember... I remember when, where I made it up, okay. but I don't remember exactly when. Yeah. What was it we like? We lived in this really crappy apartment, and okay. I remember I made it up when we lived in that crappy apartment. <laughs> so that, that apartment's actually great now because you made up one of the most iconic ones ever. Yeah. Um, what was it like painting what it's what 60 because you thought was there only 20 produced at first yes so you you had to paint 60 mold and cast 60 what was that process like that's so many toys um very organized and very repetitive yeah yeah my wife is she's she's talented in a lot of ways and one of those ways is organizing and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm real messy. And um, so she kept it organized and flowing um, where I would have had it just nuts. Yeah. Um, it was um, it's overwhelming, but you do it in you do it in stages like uh, you you pour all of one uh, figure. Uh-huh. When you get done with that figure, go and pour all of that other figure. Move yeah. on till you're done. Um, we just made it very systematic. Yeah. Instead of pouring, you know, one of these and one of these and one of these and one of these and one of these, one, we just go, boom, we're pouring all these. So what you want to do is get um, maybe two molds, three molds of the same figure. Yeah. And do three at a time. That I, you know, I've thought about doing that. I just, um, I'm a glutton for punishment, I think. And so I don't do that, which is so crazy and stupid to do. On the last one, I uh, I finally did that on the Bob A. Fett figure. As you started going through this, you uh, you produce all these toys and you keep going and have you been in um, DCON and SDCC with DKE every year since you started? Um, almost. Okay. Almost. Not every year. Yeah. I think there's a couple of years we may be missing, but um, pretty much um, I like doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of my goals. Yeah. So to say that, I, you know, I, um, well, my, my first goal was when I started selling with DKE. Yeah. And then, then when I started doing, when I did my first SDCC, which was TMNT, um, I really, um, really liked doing that and made, it made me feel good about myself. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of addicted to doing them because I'm like, yes, I'm at New York Comic Con. When I when I took this, when I started making these figures, uh-huh. I didn't think I'd be selling them. That you is, you know, a, I I was yeah. just playing around. Yeah. 
And then when you, okay, so can you tell me when you, like you were playing around and you sold that first one, describe that feeling for me. Cause this was from what we've talked about, this was initially just an escape. Yeah. That's all it was. I was suffering. Yeah. I looked for a way to take it away. How do I do that? I take my mind off the situation. Yeah. I use art to do that. And then someone buys my art. Um, yeah, it was it was very um shocking. Yeah. I'm like, you want that? You know? Yeah. It's like that's just me, you know. And then when I, you know, when Beastie Droids, when I came out and then and when it came out and everybody was like crazy about it, um, that kind of shocked me too. I mean, part of me was like, I like it. It's good. But part of me was like, man, how many of these am I going to sell? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking you be that popular. Yeah. And um, did to get it on the show, that means you interacted with Adam Goldberg, correct? Correct. How was how was that? Because like him reaching out to say like, oh, I, I want this toy. That's got to feel amazing as well. Yes, it did. Um, well, he had told me he had looked for like four years for one. Uh-huh. And that's why I say, if you want something, go straight to the artist. Um, yeah. Cause he was looking on eBay for four years. Couldn't find my work. And uh, finally they figured out who made them. And they contacted me via email and it was one of his assistants and um, his assistant told me that Adam Goldberg wanted one of my toys. And I'm like, okay. Um, And then I, that felt great. Yeah. I was like, I can't believe somebody that I watched their TV show would want something I have or made in Mm -hmm. my, in my house. Yeah, I still to this day don't really have a studio. Mm-hmm. This is all done in a house. The equipment I use is normal everyday equipment. Yep. Um, I use printers that you can purchase on Amazon. You know, um, there's nothing really extraordinary about it, but about the process or the machines I have, mm-hmm. it's very simple. Which is. I I think that I wish that more people knew that, that this kind of stuff happens in artist houses all over the world, not in giant art studios or manufacturing facilities. Like this is in our basements, in our extra rooms, sometimes just at our kitchen table. Well, that's actually where I started. Yeah. Uh, When in 2015, I, um, the 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 best place in the apartment, that crappy apartment I was telling you about. Yeah. The best place in that apartment to work was the kitchen. So um that's where we started was trying to make molds in the kitchen. Yeah. And using what? the oven. I I was I was making stuff out of clay too. Yeah. Because I was still experimenting with materials mm-hmm. and uh I didn't know if I wanted to what I was learning to mold. So I was using clay too, to kind of make things, um, but not resin. Yeah. And, um, so I, you know, yeah, it starts off in the kitchens. Um, I know some people, some of my friends have, uh, studios, et cetera, but you only really need one room or your house. Yeah. And if I, if I remember correctly, you don't love clay. I hate it. <laughs> and you I hate use it. wax to do your molds, right? Yeah. How in the heck did you come across doing wax for your molds instead of clay? Well, I was up at a place called Makerspace. I don't okay. know if y'all have them. Where I, I've where heard of are. Makerspace, but we I don't think we have them here. Okay. Basically, a lot of people pay a monthly fee to belong to a club that has a building 
that has all kinds of machines in it to do stuff um, oh. like laser cutters. Um, you name it. They've got, you know, saws. They've got everything. And, and you can just maker build space? 3D printers, too. Yeah. Uh, they got yeah. 3D printers. Yeah, makerspace. So it's basically like, like a, a nerd club. Yeah. You know, for makers. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Everybody there is nice, too, because they're all nerds. Yeah. Is that where you picked up on the wax part? Right. What, what happened was I was being taught how to make molds. Yeah. They were using clay. And after I did that a couple of times, I did not like clay. So yeah. I was like, come on, Jeremy, there's got to be something better that you can do. And I'm like, I, I asked the lady who was teaching us, um, could we use wax? And she's like, I guess you could. So I went home and started experimenting. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I told my wife my plan, and we made up a way to do it. And um, I, was, I just hated the process, you yeah. know. Uh, so <laughs> a lot of things get invented that way um, because people want to either avoid something or solve the problem or whatever. Yeah. I, um, the part that I'm most interested in the fact that you use the wax is it's liquid. Like the part that I hate most about the clay is you have to go along the edge and make sure the, it's all the way up there and make sure everything's perfect with the clay. But when you have like the liquid wax, it just fills in and does it all itself. The question I have with that is like, is venting just as easy? Is, is all those like normal things that we do? Is it just as easy with wax? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. definitely. You can you can carve into the wax. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I would recommend dental tools. Yeah, I use a couple different sets of like dental tools style yeah, when I'm I all, do clay. Yeah, I'm all about taking stuff from like, you know, I'll see something at the dentist and I'm like, that would work really good for, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is that called? Yeah. <laughs> How funny. Can I just steal that when you guys are done? <laughs> I had a, I had one of my dentists give me something. It was a, it, what it did is it shook the molds yeah. because they make molds of your mouth at the dentist. Yeah. So I was telling him I didn't have a, a pressure pot yet. And he actually gave me, he called it a vibrator. I don't know what it's called, but <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it basically just shakes your, um, your mold back and forth. Yeah. Get all the bubbles out. Right. Yeah. Does it work super well? I've seen a couple of people use those. This one didn't for me, or I would have okay. kept it, but yeah, it, always think outside the box and yeah. like any, anybody that makes molds, dentists, whoever they've all got some kind of tools that can yeah. help you make resin. There's um, I love when people think outside the box, because then that's how we get some of the most creative toys and some of the most creative ways of doing things. I'm always blown away by some artists that um, can like figure out how to do things like the standard, I guess, is like, we all need a pressure pot if we want like really good crisp clean toys but then there's artists that for the longest time didn't have it or still don't and their toys come out immaculate and right. it's it's crazy to think that like some of us are still just doing things without some of the like needed essentials and it's incredible to see how good the work is i agree yeah so as you you're continuing to create and you're doing all this. And now you've been in this scene for what seven years now? Something like that. How would you say the scene has shifted or uh, maybe changed since you've been in it? Um, that's hard to say. Yeah. I don't know that it's changed that much. Okay. Um, I think it's still in its infancy. Yeah. Um, it's more and more people find out about it every day, yeah. but I think um, 
bootleg action figures or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it's still uh, growing and it hasn't reached the level it needs to yet. Yeah. Um, as far as changing, yeah, I haven't seen much change. Um, it's the concepts are, are basically very similar. Um, so I'm not seeing too much evolution. I will say there was a piece that was at San Diego Comic-Con and I don't know who made it. I'm sorry. I didn't get your name, but it was, um, basically, I think it was a, uh, container of French fries. Oh, uh, was it the Ronald, was it the Ronald McDonald one where he's like this? And the bubble was a skull. Oh, I got to look that up. I can't, I didn't even look that The bubble closely. is a skull. If you turn the package sideways, yeah. you'll see the profile of a skull. DKE, who made that? Oh my gosh. The uh, double head made it. The McAngel so, of Death. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What? Did you see the other one that the dove selling that um um I'm trying to remember where the guy is from, but it has a pop-up in the middle. Oh my gosh, yeah, abracadab proof or uh poof. Yeah, Oni from Dagoba. That one's really cheap. I yeah, I you know what's so crazy to me is the and maybe this is like a good where is he from i wish it would tell me on here um he probably said it in a video um some of the work and and maybe you resonate with this uh or, or not but like some of the work that comes from other countries there is this dumb part of my brain uh that just says like some of these countries may not have access to some of the materials or, or whatever the dumb part of my brain is saying. Um, but then you see their work and it's like, your work is, it puts some of mine to shame. Like your work is so good, but I've talked about it before. I got um, some from uh, Tehran and the backers were some of the best backers I'd ever seen. And the toy is excellent. And it's, it's crazy that I would ever believe that some of these countries couldn't access some of that stuff because they're killing it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't explain it either, but those two works, I saw an evolution. Yeah. Uh, where it's starting to change. Um, but for the most part, I think, um, it's no one's really innovated. Um, a lot since suck lord in my my opinion and i and it's interesting to think about where it's gonna go because we can all do little changes here and there right that's like whenever magnetic articulation came in that probably shifted things and then uh there's ball and socket articulation and when we make all the different parts twist and um you now have different packaging and and how uh yo-yo dine is doing cereal boxes or now we have like it seems like there's little things that will always change and progress it but those big jumps like suck lord first starting it's going to be weird to see what the next big jump is yeah yeah i i uh i've done magnetic articulation and it's not fun yeah <laughs> i don't love it and um uh, uh yeah unless my idea needs that like i can't think of another way to do it yeah um i i pretty much stay to the standard uh no articulation yeah especially if the toy doesn't open right well yeah. none of mine open right i i, I kind of follow the suck lord rules yeah the suck lord pieces don't open most of the time yeah um the bubble is taped down in some way you know um so i kind of stick with the old school uh because 
I know ultimately, ultimately, I don't want them to open it. You know? Yeah. I mean, if they really want to, great, but um, I think the piece is complete when it's the sculpture and the the card. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I I think when I started, I thought articulation was needed, uh, even if the bubble didn't open, because that's I always have just like the bubble is always stuck to the card for me. And then on the last couple that I've made, I just decided I don't want to do articulate. Like, it seems like such a waste of time to do articulation, especially if you're not supposed to handle the figure. Yeah. Well, Rika does something really cool. Yeah. How many people see the back of the figure? Right. So but Rika makes them two dimensional. Oh, does he just lay it and only mold the top of it? You've got it. That is incredible that makes so much more sense too because then it sits know. against the card flat too yeah oh i like it that. doesn't do that the bubble dance wow that makes it easier because the hardest part is most of my toys i'll glue to the card back um that way they don't jumble around because i don't like that and i uh but if i would have just done what rika did it would have been easier to glue to the dang card back and less resin. Oh, see, this is why this podcast is good. For people yeah. listening, it's hints, tips, tricks. You're welcome. You're going to go look at Rika's work now, aren't you? Yeah. After after this, I'm going to spend 30 minutes trying to You should to hit him out. up. You I should hit him up and ask him how he does it. So I uh, I was bummed. So the it's tougher with artists that um, either have really big followings or like really busy he was supposed to be on the podcast at one point and I was so amped, but he got super busy and we had to reschedule and we haven't, I haven't gotten him a date yet, but um, now I know what to talk about when we get that date again. That's one of the things that's unique about Rika. Yeah. Uh, not only can he do five foot sculptures. Yeah. But in action figures, but um he he can also he comes up with ways to do things that are not traditional yeah which yeah. you know he thought about it analyzed the problem do i really need a three dimensional figure is anyone going to see the back no how do i stop it from dancing around make it flat yeah and then even his blisters he did that um i think he makes his own yeah, he did a what the heck was that? It was a UFO one, and that blister was like massive on the card, and the card was big, and it was just like the perfect shape for it. Was just great. It was great. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna go stare at his thing after this. But for dead greedy, we've come to this point where you've been producing, and and you uh, have some iconic work that's come out, and one that we haven't even talked about, which I want to talk. Well, before we get to this. A hammerhead you you put the hand the head of a hammer on it and it's seamless and it looks like it would be an actual toy that i would pick up how did that come about the hammerhead uh with the hammer on it really simple yeah. really simple um i like a lot of pop art yep and um i just thought that hammerhead, if you took it literal, yeah, um, it would look cool if I put a hammer on it. Also, yeah. I had some influence from the um, the wall mm -hmm. with the walking hammers. Yeah. Um, so there's two versions of that. There's one that's done in brown and blue. Okay. And it's, it's called knock noggin. Mm -hmm. And then there's another version that I did um, that is Pink Floyd. And it's black and red with the silver head. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have seen that one. So the, the influence for that came from, I thought the shapes would look really cool mm -hmm. as, um, I, like, I try to build icons. I, yeah. I try to. So, like, 
when I look at something, I try to say what kind of impression is this going to make a strong impression of, you know, iconic, non-forgettable expression. What is this going to do? Yeah. And so I just thought to me, the hammer on top of his head just looked amazing. So that was actually a hammer. Uh, I went on eBay and bought this little hammer and um, I took it apart. And I don't know how old it was. It was pretty old. Took the hammer apart and used an actual uh, hammerhead action figure. Um, saw the top of his head off um, and then molded uh, molded the metal head to the neck. Yeah. And uh, made a mold of that. And uh, luckily, when metal, it wouldn't have held it up. But mm. because it's made out of resin, it will. Um, but I, I try to build icons. I try to make sure that everything I make is quality. Um, even though I keep this standard of um, of uh, bootlegging, I want my work to look bootlegged. Yeah. But I'm at the same time uh, trying to make something iconic. Yeah. Um, like the, the Beatles, I studied a lot mm. and I try to make something good every time I release. It. Um, yeah, I let myself down if I don't sell out or get something that clicked. Yeah. Well, Hey, you're killing it. You've got it going on. You found your groove yeah. in it. And it you looks like, so. yeah, it looks like you found your voice, which is incredible to see uh, an artist do. Um, for Dead Greedy, after all this time of creating and um, being in the toy scene for so long, and and doing and and coming out with work that's uh, phenomenal, um, where do you where are you headed, and what's next? I I know as much about where I'm headed as you do. Um, I know that I'm going to keep doing this okay. uh, for a while. I don't know um, what I'm going to produce next. Yeah. Um, I but I am going to keep doing this because I have met so many good people. Yeah. Through uh, doing this. Um, also, I am because of my liver transplant, mm -hmm. I don't have an immune system. So okay. most of my friends are online or toy makers. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be here making things. Uh, hopefully I'll do some more uh, collaborating. My mm -hmm. last work that's uh, at San Diego Comic-Con right now, um, uh, Consume Greed, that mm -hmm. one I did with uh, my friend Hal Hefner and uh, Paul Draper. Um, that one's out right now. Um, I'm going to do the next DKE show. Mm -hmm. I know that. But past that, I don't know. I, but I am going to keep creating and trying to innovate. I'm, yeah. I, you know, I see uh, like that one we were talking about a minute ago, mm -hmm. the French fries with the skull. Yeah. Man, I wish I would have thought of that, you know? So I see a lot of those. Yeah, I, I see toys like that all the time that I'm just so impressed with. Um, that each, like uh, Rika's Stormy on the cross. Like that that toy is phenomenal. I have one. I, I don't have many people's work. Um, Barrio Boba, I have the most of because I think there's a nostalgia piece to it. And I, I like all his star Wars and homies mix matchups and stuff. Um, but yeah, I had to get one of the Rika ones. Cause I just love religious art like that. It's so fun. And um, yeah, but I think um, I, it's good to know that you like someone that has created these iconic pieces is still like the rest of us. Like, well, I don't know where I'm headed. 
but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have any mystic answers or, you know, secret tricks or nothing. Yeah. I, um, you know, I just take each day, each day by day and do what makes me happy. Uh, the, the figures make me happy right now. So until I find out I need to do something else, I'm going to keep doing them. I love that. As we close out this episode, the last thing that I want every artist to do, and I love it, is please plug everything of who you are and, and what you do and what you got going on and how people can get a hold of you and all those good things. Um, you can go to deadgreedy.com. You can go to uh, Dead Greedy on Instagram. Um, those are probably be the best places. Yeah. Also, go pick up that beautiful piece you got going on at SGCC. Uh, last time I checked, there was one left. Oh, that's incredible. Congratulations on that as well. That was before Comic-Con. Oh, my gosh. So you might be sold out. It could be, uh, unless there's one still. I'll I wanna, check. Yeah, I want to see who the lucky person is that gets the last one. Um. Hey, thank you so much for being on Toys on Tap. Uh, it's always a thank you for having me. Toys on Tap. Toys on Tap. The next episode. The next episode. It's great. It's amazing. You're going to want to listen to it. It's not right now, though. You're going to have to wait till the next episode to listen to it. Oh, when's that? The next one. Cool. Toys on Tap. Toys on Tap. The next one's going to be good, too. So stay tuned and, and, and listen to that. Toys on Tap. Awesome.